that are new every morning. And great is thy faithfulness. We are not consumed because of you. Father, this evening we also want to thank you for your presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We come before your throne, O Lord, and ask that as I start ministering, O Lord, later activate the ministry of the angels on this exalted altar. Father, I also ask that let your Holy Spirit have full, full prohemience. I surrender my body and soul and spirit into your hands, O Lord. Use me just as a vessel, and at the end of the day, let Jesus be glorified. And let your will be done as I minister. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen. Today's message is, Lord, increase my faith, part three. Lord, increase my faith, part three. A number of them have already ministered on this important subject, and uh, I want to ride on what they've already discussed concerning this topic. And I also just want to emphasize just one of few points concerning this topic, a very important topic. We are living in the time when most of the great weapons of the kingdom are being abused. Some of these great weapons are things like prayer. Prayer is one of the greatest weapons which is being abused by the kingdom of Satan. Faith equally has not been uh, spared. So this evening, I want to tackle a bit trying to define faith. Because if you are going to ask the Lord to increase your faith, you must know what you want the Lord to increase. You cannot ask the Lord to increase that which you do not know. Is it measurable? Can it be monitored? So it's important that we define what is faith and how it operates. And also, I want also to bring to your attention that in, today, in the Christian faith, there is a lot of misunderstanding concerning the subject of faith. We are seeing a lot of people, some of the, some of the preachers or prophets, signifying that they are floating, and showing that they have great faith. But is that real faith? We are also seeing that some of the things that our Lord Jesus refused to do when he was tempted, like climbing, falling off from the cliff to prove that he was a son of God. We are seeing a number of ministers, pastors, prophets, trying to prove themselves that they are a man of God. But is that faith? So it's important that we understand this critical subject, because this subject, without understanding it fully, will be misled and will not be able to grow it or let it increase. I'll start by defining what is faith according to the English dictionary. Faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. For example, you have faith when you sit on a chair. You have faith that it will not make you fall because you believe that the person who put it there, first he has made it that it's working, and the person who has designed it in such a way that it cannot make you fall. So you have faith that you will not fall. So we live in the world where we express different faith. But is this the faith that we are talking about when we are talking about Christian faith? So Christ, a faith, again, in the a dictionary can be defined as strong belief in the doctrine of a religion based on spiritual conviction that, that are unproof. What is faith? Is, faith is not positive thinking. Many people believe that when they've got a positive thinking, they've got faith. No, it's not. Faith is not determination to believe something, even in the face of difficulties. And some people believe that they were born with faith. That is not correct. We are going to use the Bible, the Word of God, to try to define faith according to the Word of God, and uh, then we can see how it can be increased. What is faith in a Christianity? Faith in Christianity is simply Believing God for his promises, trusting his faithfulness, and relying on God's character and faithfulness to act when we are in need of him. The Bible's definition of faith can be found in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the, and the evidence of things not seen. So faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. We simply mean by this uh, definition, according to the Bible, that faith is a foundation that supports the things that we hope for. If we are hoping that Jesus is coming and to take us to go to heaven, there must be faith. And what is that faith? It's based on the word of God. Jesus has promised that he's coming back. And Jesus has integrated not to lie 
or to change his mind. So he's coming back. So because of that, we have faith that of that thing that we hope that is coming. It's also the conviction of things not seen. Meaning that when we are talking about conviction of things not seen or evidence of things not seen, we believe and we are convinced we have faith that there is a throne in heaven for God. We have not seen it, but we believe according to the word of God. And because of that belief, we, believe, we walk like that and we speak like that because of our, our belief and faith that there is uh, the throne of heaven. Faith is a wonderful thing. For instance, let's take an instance when you become saved. The Bible tells me that we are saved by grace through faith. So we are saved. Faith is involved when you are we are being saved. What happens when somebody answers an altar call? The first thing that happens is that the word is preached. So the word is shared. The good news is shared. And as the word is being shared, the person hears the good news. And when he hears the good news, he has got a choice to believe or not to believe. Now, with the working of the Holy Spirit, for the Bible tells me that no one can confess Jesus as Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And the Lord Jesus also told me, he says in his word, that when the Holy Spirit comes, he shall convict men of sin. So, the person who convicts us of sin and convicts us to believe is the Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit helps us to believe in the word that has been shared. And when we believe, we must act. We must act. Because again, faith involves action. Faith involves reaction. Faith involves decision. So we see very clear that in the, during the salvation, what is our action? Our action, the Bible says that you must believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, and you must confess him with your mouth. So the action there is confession. We confess him, and that's by those actions we are saved. So, we are saved by grace through faith. So this is an example of faith in action during our salvation. But where does this faith come from? This faith, it comes from God. It doesn't come from within ourselves. The first thing we must understand that faith does not originate from ourselves. We are not born with it as natural. Because when Adam felt in the garden, he was created in the image of God. And as he was created in the image of God, he had the divine ability to govern the earth. He was able to name all the alliance. He was able to man the garden. The garden was not a small garden. We are talking about the whole earth being under one man. That man cannot guard, govern or look after the garden with his human, human, human ability. He had the divine ability. So when Adam fell in the garden and he sinned against God, that divine ability, he lost it. He lost the authority and the dominion on earth. And when he lost it, it means that no more do we have that ability of faith to do things according to the power of God. We lost fellowship. God, by his mercy and grace, he still wanted us to be restored. God is a merciful God. So we see clearly that the Bible in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace we are saved through faith. Not of ours, it's a gift of God. So this gift after the fall of Adam had to come to us through salvation. And uh, again in Romans chapter 12 verse 3, Romans chapter 12 verse 3, the Bible is, According, God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. So God has given every one us, of us a measure of faith. And it's this faith that we must allow to grow. But I want also to point out to you that this measure of faith allotted to every person is only for believers. The non-believers, they do not have this faith. That's why they are called non-believers. The people who have accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior, they are called believers because they've believed in the gospel and they've accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior and they've acted through confession. I also want to point out to you that faith is not just belief. Belief is just one component of faith. The Bible in James 2 verse 26 tells me that faith without works is dead. It goes on further to say that the devil and the demons also believe that there's only one, there's one God. 
But, so belief is not equal to faith. Belief, faith is more than belief. For faith to be complete, there must be belief. There must be also an action or reaction or a decision. Then it's complete. For faith without a decision or reaction is not complete. If you look at an example of the devil, he believes that there's one who go and God. But does he act accordingly? No. He acts as if he's the God of this world. So you can believe on something, but you don't have faith. So faith is more than believing. I also want to point to you that faith is a gift from God. Hallelujah. I want to, faith is a gift of God. It, we do not work for it. God, when you are saved, he, his spirit comes into you by faith. Imagine when you answer the outer call, Jesus comes to dwell into your heart by faith. We cannot sense this with our five senses. Neither do we feel anything entering our body. But we believe Jesus comes to live in us. Paul goes on to confess in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that I am crucified with Christ, yet I live. The life that I live is not of my own, but Christ lives in me. And I live the life of Christ. So Christ is seen in our faith. And Christ, again, when you look very closely, you find that it's a gift, and uh, we see clearly that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself is also the author and the finish of their faith. Why is the author? He's, he's an initiator. He's a no greater of our faith. He died on the cross. When he died on the cross, he made it possible for the Holy Ghost to come and convict us sin and be saved. So we see clearly that he's praying a part. The second thing that we see the Lord Jesus Christ as the finish of our faith, he lived the life of faith. He lived in obedience to the will of the Father. Even when it was not convenient, he pursued the will of the Father. He always heard the voice of the Father. And based on the voice of the Father, he believed and acted. So he's also a pioneer of our faith. He lived the life of faith, which we are supposed to live. We see also clearly that the Lord Jesus Christ himself lives in us. And he's living the same faith that he pioneered, the same life of faith. So we are born by faith and we are supposed to live by faith. For the Bible tells me they just shall live by faith. So our life is a life of faith. So it's important that we understand what faith is. Hallelujah. It's also important, let me just draw to your attention again, that the measure of faith that's given by any believer, it can either grow or remain at the same position. Just like in the physical, all of us, we have got muscles. And when you are given these muscles, there are people who make sure that they grow their muscles by their diet, the things that they eat. They also grow their muscles by going to exercise in the gym. Similarly, we have all been given a measure of faith. It's what we are doing with this measure of faith for it to grow. If we decide that the faith must grow, we must feed it with the food that it requires. And the food for faith is the word of God. As I have already defined that faith involves the word of God and believing and also action corresponding to the belief. So, the word of God is supreme for faith to be present. Without the word of God, it will be just uh, maybe magic you are praying. You must hear the word of God. And without believing, there can be no faith. And without corresponding action, it's belief without action. The Bible also tells me that the our forefathers, the Israelites, they heard the same message, but they did not mix it with faith. They believed, but they did not mix it with, meaning that they didn't act on it. And many of them perished in the wilderness. We see the Israelites moving from Egypt, and they were promised the promised land. Moses told them, but when they reached near the promised land, they, they doubted God that they are seeing giants. And God says, because you have doubted, no one of you enter. So they heard the word of God, that God was giving them that land, and they had even prophets that were leading them. But they did not believe, so they perished. So if we have to have, be men of faith, we need to mix our faith with action or reaction, or decision, based on the word of God that we have received. And this word could be a Ramah word, a word that you hear direct from God through a vision. It could be a word that comes through your the dream. It could be a word spoken by a prophet. It could also be the word that you read in the Bible 
which is the sure prophets of God. So when you are talking about the word, these are the sources of the word of God. So if you have to have faith, you need to have the word of God and you need to believe and you need to react or make a decision. There must be action for it to complete. Hallelujah. So, if we are all been given a measure of faith, how possible is that uh, there are different types of faith? If you read John, John uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 17, says, faith though comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And we first believed when we heard the word of God. So the word of God comes, the faith comes by hearing the word of God. It's very, very important. And we also see very clearly that uh, the word of God is very important for our faith to grow. So let's look at how is this faith, how can it grow? Faith is not just agreeing with the word of God or divine prompting of the Holy Spirit. It's what prompts you into action, reactions, and decisions that activate your miracles and victorious Christian living. Faith does not rely on scientific evidence. Faith does not rely on observable facts. Faith does not rely on tangible proof. Faith relies on the absolute integrity and character of God. God has a character. And the character of God, we can define is just, is all powerful, is all knowing, is everywhere. When you describe the character of God, you know who God is. And the Bible tells me in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 that my God is not a son of man to lie. No, him to repent. He cannot repent. That which he has promised that he will do, he will do. And that which he has said he will, he will fulfill, he will fulfill. It does not change. The integrity of God cannot be equal. It's not like man. When man promises you, I'm going to do A, B, C, D for you, he can change his mind, but not God. And he cannot lie. He is for sure. So you can count on his weight. We have faith in different things. People express faith in different things. Some of them they express faith in their money, but the money can be lost. Some of them they express faith in their government. The government can change. Some of them express faith in their wealth and maybe in their family. Families can die. So you need to realize that it's the integrity of, the, of God himself that backs our faith. So when you are talking about faith, we are simply talking about who is, after we have done, we have heard his word, we have believed, and we have acted. Who is going to act the final act? It's God himself. So, we see clearly that the person who anxious who makes faith to be possible is God himself. Let us look at uh, a few things concerning faith. Faith is trusting our unknown future into the hands of a known God. It must take you to know God. One of the things that you need to know, if you want to have great faith, you must know your God. You must know your God. Because when you know his characters, when you know his integrity, you can be sure of what he's going to do next. Let's look at um, some of the things that uh, Jesus talked about concerning faith. Jesus said, Luke chapter 12 verse 28. Let's read the book of Luke chapter 12 verse 28. The Bible says, it reads, If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and no more is cast into the oven. How much more will he clothe you? All little faith. Luke chapter 12 verse 28. Jesus was talking to his disciples that why do you worry about tomorrow? Why do you worry about what you are going to eat? Why do you worry about what you are going to clothe? God is able to keep these lilies. He's able to keep these babes which are here maybe for a few days. What more you who is made in the image of God? You have little faith. So we see the Lord saying... There are people who could have little faith. Let's see another person that the Lord said he had little faith. Matthew chapter 14 verse 28 to 31. Matthew chapter 14 verse 28 to 31, the Bible is, Peter said, Peter answered and said, Lord, if thou be bid to come unto the water. He said, come. And Peter was coming down out of the ship and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was between us, he was afraid and he began to sink. And he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched his hand 
and caught him and said, Oh, thou little faith, why did you doubt? One of the enemies of faith is doubt. When you have heard the word of God and you doubt, you make your faith to be little. Peter heard the Jesus. He saw Jesus walking on water. And he says, oh, how possible that Jesus is walking on water. Then he says, if it's truly you, master, call me and walk in the water. So Peter had faith that because when the Lord calls him, he walk on the water. But, and Jesus called him. He walked a few steps. But as he was walking, there was a storm that came. And that storm made him doubt. And he cried, Master, save me. There are times when we have heard the word of God. And when we have heard the word of God, and things start changing around us, we start doubting. It's not a time to doubt. Peter started sinking because he doubted. One of the signs that you have little faith is you doubt in the midst of action in faith. Peter doubted. And he said little faith. Let's look at another person that Jesus described his faith as great faith. Let's look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 5, the Bible is, When Jesus was entered Capnam, there he came into him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of paralysis, grieved and tormented. He said unto him, I'll come and heal him. And the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but they speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled, and he said to them that followed him, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thy believed, so it be unto thee. The servant was healed in the same hour. Jesus described the centurion as a man of great faith. What made Peter and the centurion different? Let's look at the centurion. The Bible tells me that the centurion loved the Jewish people. He built synagogues and he loved God. And he also loved his servant such that when his servant was sick, he started looking for the master. He believed in Jesus Christ. When he met Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ told him, I'm coming to your home to heal your servant. But the centurion refused. I'm not worthy to come for you to come into my house. That's humility. Many people, when we work for God, or we do things for God, we, when we go before him and ask for him to do anything on our behalf, we make a demand based on our work for him, or what we have done for him. The centurion was humble. And he said, I'm not worthy. He did not claim, no, look, Jesus, I've built temples. Jesus, I love your people. He said, I'm not worthy. That, on his own, made Jesus to think that he knows that faith works by grace. The second thing that we see in this scripture, very clear, is that the centurion said, no, you can just speak a word. So he realized that Jesus had authority over disease and sickness. And he compared him to a commander of the army who speaks one command and things started happening in the barrack and throw out wherever the soldiers are because they are meant to obey. So he looked at the authority of Jesus to be a very high authority. And Jesus said, I've never seen such great faith. What made Jesus make this statement is that the centurion, despite being not a Jew, he had deep understanding of God. He knew God more than the Jews. So your knowledge of God will give you great faith. It's important that we realize that there's a little faith and great faith. And our intention this evening is to understand and pray before God the Almighty that Lord, increase our faith. So let's just look at uh, another scripture. Romans chapter 4 verse 19 speaks of a weak faith. What is a weak faith? Romans chapter 4 verse 19, the Bible is, being not weak in faith, Abraham considered not his body dead when he was about 100 years, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. We see very clear that when Abraham promised, when God promised Abraham, he was still very young, but he said at an appointed time, you shall have a child. But Abraham, he believed God, but he ignored the appointed time. And this time was moving. He reached a time when it was no longer possible in physical sense for him to have a child because he was 100 years. And the, the wife, uh, whom, could no longer bear a child. 
But the Bible tells me he did not consider these facts. So for great faith to work, sometimes you have to ignore the physical senses, what you are seeing and what you are hearing. These gates makes it possible to lose faith. This is why if you have to have great faith, there are times when you need to move in a company, people who have faith. Because when you move with people who have no faith, they will make you reduce. The Bible tells me that there's a time when Jesus went to heal a child who was dead and people were mourning in the house. And as they were mourning, Jesus entered and said, this child is not dead, he's sleeping. And people started laughing. And he told all of them to go out. And he remained with only three of his disciples. And Jesus resurrected that child. So there are times when you have to look at the environment where you're when you see there's a lot of disbelief, no, that is not your area. So it's very important that we see Abraham here. He did not look at physical appearance. Let's imagine if Abraham had relatives. They say, you are still believing your God? 100 years, your woman is even reached monopause? It's not possible. So the things that we hear, the people that we trust are very important for us to walk in the journey of faith. We need to select the right people. Romans chapter 4 verse 20. The Bible tells me again about Abraham. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. There are times when you are waiting for God to fulfill his promise. All you can do is give him glory and give him thanks. You don't need to complain. You don't need to mama. All you need is you give him glory and give him thanks. This is what Abraham did. This was the secret of Abraham to persevere in the position of faith. Can this faith be increased? Yes. Can this faith grow? We are going to look at a few scriptures and try to understand that this faith can be increased or grown. Let us look, can this faith be increased? The first thing that we must look at, can this faith grow? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it's meet, because that your faith grows speedily exceedingly. God in this verse is saying their faith grows. So faith can grow. And we need to look at, if you have got a weak faith, there is hope for it. If you have a little faith, there is hope for it because it can grow. Can this faith be increased? Let's just look at Luke chapter 17 verse 1. The Bible reads Luke chapter 17 verse 1. Then he said to the disciples, it's impossible that offense should come, but all to him through whom they do come. It should be better for him, for a milestone hung around him, and they are thrown into the sea, than he should be offended one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you should forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The demand that the Lord Jesus put on his disciples seemed to be harsh. They were difficult. They looked at what he was demanding from them. In verse 1 up to 4, it looked difficult. But I want to tell you that these are the same disciples in Luke chapter 10, verse 17, who Jesus sent to go into every city and he gave him power to heal, to cast demons. And they came back celebrating that we saw the devil coming down. So these people, he had given them power before. This time around, they are saying, increase our faith. So there are situations that can demand for an increased faith from you. There are times when you need to pray, Lord, increase my faith. In this moment, we see the disciples asking. And let's see what the Lord Jesus tells them in verse 6. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say this to this mulberry, be put up in the roots and be planted in the sea and shall bear you. First thing we realize very clear, that the disciples recognize that faith is a gift from God. That's why they ask Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. We see also that Jesus answered them in a different way. He gave the smallest seed, the mustard seed, that if you have faith as small as that, 
you can tell the mulberry to be put from the ground and command it to go into the sea and to obey. What was the Lord saying to the apostles? We see in another instance, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, the disciples failed to heal a child who was epileptic. And after they had struggled, they went to ask him. And this time alone he told them, if you had faith, if it was a mustard seed, you would have done it. Meaning that they had no faith to do that. Faith, even as small as a mustard seed, can move a mountain. What is this faith? I want to, to give you a picture of this faith briefly. Faith, how great is our faith? It's according to his, who is backing your faith. Who are you depending on? Because the faith, our faith as Christians depends on God. Because God is the one who speaks the voice. He gives us commandment and when we obey, we believe and we react. He acts. We don't act. It's not our faith that acts. It's God himself. So how great is action is dependent on how, God is, how, go, how great is God. God, all power belongs to him. He's everywhere. And he's all-knowing. He's a creator of the universe. So, anything that we initiate by our faith to him can be done. But, let's look at a few things here when we are dealing with faith. Again, we see very clearly that on this subject of faith, we see clearly that uh, faith, you can look at it, let's look at uh, you have a currency. Let's imagine it's a dollar currency. It's a hundred dollar bill. This hundred dollar bill, there's a government who backs it. The credibility of the government is important. If you have any currency that is worthless to the government of that nation, it's a worthless. Similar to your faith. If your faith is based on money, it's nothing. Money can lose value. If your faith is based on a uh, on a, a government or a leader that you are trusting, that leader can lose an election. If your faith is based on your family members, your family members, but we have somebody who's backing this $100 bill. If you, who backs up the $100 bill is important, similar to our faith. Faith is simply, it's not us acting, it's us believing in the God of the universe, the creator of everything, and is the one who make, brings this to action. So in short, I can define faith. Faith as first, there must be the word of God. Two, you must believe. Three, there must be a reaction or action or decision. In the absence of a reaction or decision, faith is not complete. In the absence of belief, faith is not complete. In the absence of the word of God, Faith is not complete. Many people believe that they have faith because they've just dreamed I want this big car. I have faith for it. No, my brother. For you to have faith that you have that big car, God must speak to you. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And you must believe. And your tendency, if it's that car, you must start planning for it if you have heard the word of God. And that could be called faith. So faith, faith helps us to be of service to God. Faith is what makes us to be of service to God. Faith is what makes us to live a victorious life. Faith makes us to be obedient to God. I want to bring to your attention that there are times when faith can fail. Faith can fail. The Lord, the, our Lord and Master, the, our Savior, he talked to Peter in Luke 22. And he said, Peter, Satan desire to siphon it like wheat, but they have prayed that your faith fails not. Meaning that faith can fail, but Jesus prayed for that faith. Who is praying for your faith that doesn't fail you when you are going through trials? You need somebody to pray for you when you are going through that your faith doesn't fail you. We see clear that Jesus, Peter was uh, tried. He denied the Lord Jesus three times. And after that, he looked lost and he was looking like he was going to his old trade of fishing. But when the Lord appeared, when he was resurrected and he appeared to him, Peter's faith was restored. Peter had more grace than Judas Cariot. Judas Cariot was not restored and his faith failed. 
faith can fail. So I see clearly that faith can fail. There are certain things that can make faith fail. Number one, if you do not know your God very well. At that time, Peter thought that was the end of the, his ministry with the Lord Jesus because here is the Lord Jesus Christ arrested and the Lord Jesus Christ, he tried in the garden to fight and the Lord Jesus said, no, 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 you don't need to fight. Peter missed a point there. He also started thinking that maybe the Lord should have fought back and rescued himself. But when they took him there and they did judgment, he's, he thought it was the end of the ministry. So his faith was almost failing. But because of the prayer of our Savior, his faith did not fail. Because he went back and he strengthened his brother and he led the early church. And we see after Peter, after the Pentecost, when he had received the Holy Ghost, he was a different Peter. He was prepared to die on the cross like his Savior, only upside down. And that's the life he died. So his faith changed from a faith that almost failed to a faith that was uncompromising. Where do I see faith can fail? What can make faith fail? I see also clearly that uh, when the Lord Jesus Christ was in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed three times before the Father, Lord, if it's possible, my God, let this cup be taken away from me. The Lord Jesus Christ knew clearly his mission. That was to die for us. But when it came, it was not easy for him. He thought the Father could change his mind. And he prayed three times. And the third time, the angel appeared and he said, but not my will, let your will be done. One of the reasons why faith can fail, this is the Lord our Savior who called Lazarus come forth. But this time he went to the garden and he prayed and the Father, the heaven was silent. Why was heaven silent? Because it was, not, it was against the will of the Father. Your faith can fail if it's not the will of the Father. There are times when you need to pray, pray of inquiry, to understand is what you are believing God is really your is his will. Have you heard from God for sure? Many people's faith has failed because not the will of God. I want to bring to your attention that the Lord Jesus Christ himself, when he knew that his father could not change his mind, he allowed the will of his father to happen. And he died on the cross. And the Bible tells me that angels came to encourage him to go to the cross. It's important that we pray for one another because faith can fail. There are many people's faith has failed because of trials. You know, faith will be tried. Faith will be tested. Job was tried. His faith was tested. He almost, his, his faith almost fell. But by the grace of God, he stood. So uh, it's important that we look at faith can fail. The, what makes faith fail? You must understand the will of the Father. You must have the knowledge, the full knowledge of the appointed time and the seasons. Abraham, Abraham and his wife, they had challenges concerning the voice of God. When they were told that you have a child, they believed it was going to be soon, such that the wife thought, no, I think God is not coming through. Have my mate and give, let him give a child. But every voice of God, every promise of God has an appointed time. Sometimes we see faith failing because we don't understand the timings of God. We don't understand the working of God, the season of God. So for you to have great faith, you need to understand the seasons of God and the timing. I want to tackle the last part of it. How can I increase my faith? Since now we know there is weak faith, strong faith, little faith, and great faith. How can I increase my faith? Number one, faith. The faith, the Bible faith that we are talking about comes from hearing the word of God. And if you are not born again, the only way that you can hear is a way to the altar. And that takes the Holy Spirit to convict you. The first thing that you must hear for you to have a measure of faith given to you by God, you must be born again. The Bible tells me very clear that no one can confess Jesus as Lord unless the Father does it. So that comes as a gift from the Father. So the first step is that you must be born again so that the seed of faith can be put in your heart and you can nurture it. The second way you can grow the, the faith is that you need, you need to make sure that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, 
he comes to enhance all the gifts and he comes with his gift and all the gifts even the gift of faith becomes more pronounced and he lives in you and he directs you and he opens your mind and your heart to understand who god is and he gives you extraordinary faith the men of great faith have been led by the holy spirit so baptism of the holy spirit is not a question you must remain constantly filled for you to have great faith number three you must meditate on the word of god because faith comes by hearing the word of god and the only way you can know god is by his weight you cannot know god by your feelings you cannot god know god by his, your impressions your impressions can change your feelings can change but if you know god by the, his word his word cannot change so you must be have an overwhelming love for his word and you must have an overwhelming confidence in the god of the word it's important that you allow your feelings to be governed by the word of god because the word of god cannot change why your feelings can change if you have to have great faith you must meditate on the word of god and allow a word of god to govern your feelings then you will walk in a journey of faith number three any gift of four any gift of given by god must be exercised just like the, in the parable matthew chapter 25 verse 25 when god gave the talent there is one who went and hid some people they're hiding the measure of faith that they've been given they are not able to exercise when god gives them the opportunity to exercise them they still hid their measure if you keep on hiding it it will not. how do you exercise your faith when you hear the word of god believe it and act on it as you exercise god will take you into places and you allow you to understand things that no one understand because you have been exercising your faith number five you must be you must be a person of prayer the disciples asked lord increase their faith the father to the child who's a prophetic said master help my unbelief you can pray for the faith to be increased the to fellowship with god and the holy spirit and as you fellowship with him you start knowing better and the more you know god the stronger your faith lastly but not the least you can increase your faith by association they are men of god who god has used mightily their testimony can shape your faith as you go through trials they share with you their testimony and how god came through for them you'll be encouraged and you'll be able to trust god and overcome that challenge so these are a few things that i want before i we close i want to make specific prayers for people the first group of people that i would like to pray for are the people who are not born again these people they don't have even a measure of faith in the west extreme they can have positive thinking in the west extreme they can have determination just to see things go right so i want to pray for these particular people because for you the journey of faith begins by surrendering your life to christ so the first step for the journey of faith you must surrender your life you must acknowledge jesus as your savior you must acknowledge that you are a sinner number one number two you must uh, uh, confess your sins to god number three you must repent from your sins and ask for forgiveness you must also believe in the substitution sacrifice that jesus when he died on the cross he died for your sin and when he was resurrected he was resurrected with you so you connect your life to jesus christ and when you confess and accept him and invite him in your life you are saved so i want to pray for these people particularly let's uh, stand up and pray for these people particularly let's go before the throne of grace and uh, petition the throne of grace for these people father in the name of jesus I, everyone under the sound of my voice be it online or or, or on offside father i ask that father in the mind name of jesus help such a person 
Father, anyone struggling, they do not know which way to go. They are struggling. They are living in a life where they do not know. Father, I ask by the action of your Holy Spirit, who is the promised helper, who was promised that you convict men of sin. Father, I ask that let your ministry of the, the Holy Spirit be activated, even in this area of Mutendere, even in this area of mass media, even in this area. Father, anyone in this area that have not received Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, I pray that, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit convict them of sin. Let them be drawn to you. Let the Holy Spirit help them to confess their sins that the Lord Jesus' blood can cleanse their hands, can purify their hearts. Father, I ask by your mercy, let these people visit them in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for anyone who will listen even to this voice at any time, Father. Father, draw him closer by your spirit. Draw him closer by your spirit. Have mercy on him. Forgive his sin. Let the Holy Spirit convict him of sin. In Jesus' mighty name I've prayed. Amen. The second people I want to pray for this evening are those people who are the faith have failed. Faith, I told you, it can fail. And some people, when they fail faith farm, they go back to their old life. They even go to visit the shrines of the devil because of the disease that they had, because of the challenge that they had. When that faith has failed, people don't even think like to be restored. I want to petition and intercede for such people that anyone who was a minister who was even a member of this church who has gone away who has gone astray whose faith has failed i cry on their behalf father in the name of jesus i cry that by your mercy give them a divine invitation by your mercy give them a divine encounter let that encounter be a lasting encounter let that lasting that last encounter, leave an impression on the heart to draw them closer to yourself. Father, I pray that let their faith be restored. Let their faith be restored. Let their faith be restored. Father, I pray that any challenger, any power that's hindering them to be restored to your faith, I come against it in the name of Jesus. I ask that, Father, by the action of your Holy Spirit, this such a house, shake everything. Let them come back to the faith. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in your mercy, do what you, what you sent your only son to come and do. Die for us and reconcile ourselves to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I've prayed. I also want to pray the similar category of the people whose faith are about to fail because of the challenges that have gone. It could be sickness. It could be you've lost a house. It could be you've lost your marriage. It could be that you've lost uh, the thing that you treasured most. I want to tell you that anything else is not worth trusting, but trust in the Savior. Trust in God who cannot change. I want to pray for you in particular. I want, if you are listening to me on the sound of my voice, I pray that be restored in the name of Jesus. I pray your faith will not fail. Your faith will not fail in the name of Jesus. I pray for ministering angels to minister unto you. I pray for the Holy Spirit to visit you and strengthen you in your faith, in your journey of faith. Let him open your spiritual eyes. Let him give you a heart of understanding, a heart of obedience. Walk back to the Father, for the Father is waiting. He wants to make a feast on your behalf. I ask that turn around and see your God. He is waiting for you. In Jesus' mighty name I've prayed. I also want to pray for another particular people who could have their faith is facing challenges. Their faith is facing challenges. And their faith is challenging because of the situation that they are going through. I want just to petition the throne of grace that Father, change their circumstances. Change their lives. I want to pray for such people. They could be members of this church. You are facing challenges. You have lost your job. You have been sick. You feel discouraged. No one is there for me. I want to pray for you. And when things happen like that, the faith, you might end up losing your faith. Your faith becomes weak. I want to pray for you. If you are listening to my voice, key in in the name of Jesus. I pray at any time you listen to this key in and ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. For God is gracious. God is rich in mercy. He who comes to him shall not in any way forsake. He shall have mercy. For he is merciful. Father, I want to thank you. I pray for every member of LHA who is struggling with death because of their situation. Maybe their marriage is shaking. Maybe their business is shaking. Maybe their health is shaking. Father, I pray for your divine intervention. I pray that Father visit them. Intervene on your behalf. Show them your goodness. For your word says, cast your burden unto Jesus for he cares for you. Father, on their behalf, I bring such burden. I pray for them that their faith 
may not fail. I pray that Father restore their health, restore their business, restore their marriage. Father, anyone trusting you for a child, Father, I pray that Father divinely provide a child. For Father, there is nothing impossible with you. Paul seated before King Gar 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 and he said in uh, Acts chapter 26 verse 8, King Agrippa, why do you think it's impossible for God to resurrect the dead? The God himself, he is a creator. He created us. It is nothing impossible. If he wants to resurrect anyone, he can. Because he's a creator. If he wants to make a new home, he can. If he wants to make uh, anyone who is struggling in any way, he can. So I want to bring before you this God who is the creator and is the governor of the universe. He created all things and the fullness of the earth and everything in it belongs to him. I want to bring it before you. I want to bring the situation before this almighty God, the God of this ministry, the God who, of, who reigns over our uh, LCC. I want to bring him before you. To this evening, I just want to cry on your behalf that whatever situation that you are going through, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the visitation of the Lord be evident in this man. Let the Lord visit you. Let the Lord heal your heart. Let the Lord heal your disease. Let the Lord heal your marriage. Let the Lord heal everything that concerns you. May he perfect everything that concerns you in this season. I pray that as you draw closer to him, he will draw closer to you. I pray that he will lift you from that dungeon where you are suffering, where you have been afflicted, dejected, for lost. Father, I ask in your mercy, this such one. Father, I ask that anyone contemplating to commit suicide, Father, I command that spirit of suicide out in the name of Jesus. I command Father, in the name of Jesus and by your mercy, let angels minister unto such one and strengthen them to look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who is always caring and he died for us. I also want to pray for people struggling in business. Father, people are struggling in any way. Father, Father, we are in the season of divine repositioning. Father, I ask in your mercy, move anyone who has been experiencing failure to success. Move anyone who their story has been very bad to glory. Father, move everyone who has shame as their garment. Move them to fame in the name of Jesus. I ask, Father, let the people have labored with no result. Take them to fame in this season. As you are divinely positioning your children, anyone in LH who is suffering from such, Father, reposition them divinely. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. My last prayer point is deliverance from sin and disease. I want to pray for people who are particularly sick. You could be in the hospital right now. Key in, it's not too late. God is not a respect of distance. There is no barrier for God. The centurion told Jesus, just speak a word. Just speak a word. This word from the uh, exalted pulpit, as it touches your sick bed, I command that sickness to go. This word, as it come, finds you in a bedroom, start going with your health, start going not breathing. Father, I ask that that healing flow into that place in the name of Jesus. I ask, Father, by your mercy, visit everyone who is struggling with their faith. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. At this point in time, we are going to we are going to do offering and the verse that we are going to look at um, is second Corinthians chapter nine verse six. Second Corinthians chapter nine verse six. Second Corinthians chapter the Bible is but this I say, he who sows sparing also shall reap sparing, and he who sows bountifully also shall reap bountifully. So let each one of you give as he purpose in his heart, not grudgingly or ne of necessity. For God loves a chief giver. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you should always have all sufficiency in all things, that you may have abundance in every good work, that God is able to make all grace abound to you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things, that you may have abundance for every good work. Amen. Offering time, blessing time. It's time for offering. It's an opportunity to worship God with your substance. It's an opportunity to honor God. We have numbers for those who are, who are trying to give um, offering online. We have numbers that uh, you need to follow. 
that you need to follow. And uh, please, you can give offering to those numbers. And also, those who are on site, you can give offering. Before we leave, let me just pray for anyone who has given the offering. Father, I would like to thank you for everyone who has given the offering today, on site and, and uh, online. Father, I stand in faith according to your word, that Father, bless them beyond expectation. Father, meet their needs. Meet them at a point of need. In Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we close, okay. Uh, we need to make announcement at this point in time. I would like to inform you that we have got one hour of uh, prayer revolution happening tomorrow at 6.15 to, uh, to 7.15, just an hour. Please come through and you'll be blessed. This has been a blessing for many. And this is something that we hold treasury. As a number of people have been coming here, we have been blessed, and we have been blessed. Please, I encourage you to come for this prayer revolution tomorrow at 6.15. Don't miss. The place is just here, Lighthouse Arena. Come and join us. You'll be blessed. The second announcement. Lastly, we are just going to pray for this as we go. Heavenly Father, we commit every name in this basket. That has been committed to you. Holy Spirit, we ask for your action concerning these names. Father, draw them closer to yourself. And Father, let the Holy Spirit convict them of sin. And Father, we pray that, Father, they are convicted. Let, uh, let, let the laborers in your harvest field visit them and bring them to this house. And Father, even as we, they come, establish them in this house. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. With thanksgiving our hearts. Amen.